Howdy everybody, Kato Chess here, bringing another video helping those that are between 400 and 1000 get better at chess. We are playing the Carol Khan against Abdurabi, Abdu, Ab, Ab, Abdur, Abbey, Outdoor Abbey, from Egypt, Egypt. Alright, so we get the exchange variation, finally, okay. Uh, typically, I feel like I, I've been playing against the advanced a lot, and it's kind of nice to see the exchange variation. As I've said a hundred times before in my previous videos, take screenshots of like moves 0 through, 0 through 10, 0 through 12, um, you know, if you're lower rated, because more often than not, these positions are going to arise in your games as well. Um, we're going to exchange the bishop for the knight here, usually not very advantageous. The only time you don't exchange is in the Tartikar variation. So whenever you get asked to leave, that's when you take. You don't want to take before then because you want to, you know, get your pieces out and uh, get developed. But when they ask you to leave, you could just take. And as soon as you take, the knight's going to go here. Uh, it's just a pretty standard move order. This is a pretty slow move. I'm not really sure what it accomplishes unless he wants to go here. Um, so I don't know really if this is the best move or not, but I'm going to play a6. Um, when the bishop is developed on this square, I think this is actually the best place for your bishop to go. Because if he were to ever castle short, you could drop the bishop back, queen could go here, you could checkmate. Um, but he castles long, which I think is just a, a huge inaccuracy. I'm really hoping that we just blow this guy out of the water. Already I'm thinking about sacks on this square. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my bishop on e7. I'm going to, well, I was going to castle short. But now, um, this square gets really dangerous if we castle short. Um, he, he has no way of getting rid of this pawn. If you notice... If he wanted to break through to my king to force my hand in the castling, he would essentially have to be able to win this pawn. So as long as I could prevent him from winning this pawn, we should be pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do uh, here is I'm going to advance my pawn forward. And I think I'm going to bring my queen out and I'm going to start trying. I'm going to start to try to break things up on on the queen side over here and see if I can't uh, make something happen. Also, I'm always going to keep an eye on this pawn here. Um, could be a target down the road. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick with my initial plan of bringing the queen up to b6 so that I could advance this pawn. Also, I'm stopping him from delivering this check, which would prevent me from casting altogether because I would just recapture with the queen. So what I suggest you do in the lower rated levels is come up with like a couple plans or ideas, you know, and I say a couple because your opponent can make one move maybe that you didn't even see and it could completely, you know, ruin whatever your plan was. And a lot of times in the earlier rating ranges, like people learn the scholars made. So they have like one idea in mind and they will try to do everything they can to make that idea happen. I'm also trying to think about what my opponent wants. Um, he can't really get rid of this knight without, you know, an exchange. That seems pretty good. I don't really see anything too detrimental at this point in time that he can do. I have really good control um, over the c4 square. So I'm going to just go ahead with my plan. And what I'm envisioning down the road is pushing this pawn, him trading, takes, takes takes and then we start pushing this pawn and we get in um over on the side of the board down the a file or the b file maybe even the c file you never know uh-oh hold on un momento Sorry about that. This is, uh, I don't really edit my videos. <laughs> so I'm not editing that out. 
Um, now what I'm thinking, so he could go here and double up on this pawn. I could just move my my rook over, I think. I'm already considering um, sacking, but I don't really know if that's the best plan. I'm also wondering if it would be advantageous to bring my knight in. <sighs> Let me see here. If I could get my knight in, then I could really sack on this square. I think... So it's either between that or pushing these pawns. Um, mm, I think I think I'm gonna go this way. I think I'm gonna go this way because I uh, I'm almost wondering, you know, if I if I put my knight here and he decides to trade, he's just gonna be doing me a huge favor. In which case, he might try to run the king. Yeah. I think he's already like, uh-oh, he's considering running his king away. So let's go here. So I'm targeting the bishop. I don't think I would take this bishop. It's not really doing a whole lot. I, I almost think it would be better just to sack it. Oh, he takes. He takes. Okay, he takes. Obviously, I have to take with the pawn. And if the king goes to this square, I can check. But then I think I'm just kind of, no. If the king goes here, I think I would just take this pawn. Um, okay, so I think this just blunders a knight. I think this just blunders a knight. But then I'm almost wondering if he goes here, should I give this check first? I think I should. I think I'm going to give this check here. It might have been better just to take the knight, but, but I'm going to go for it. Okay, because now I have this check here. So let's just consider it, because I really should take this knight, but let's just consider it. Check. If the king goes here, I don't think I have enough firepower just yet. I think I should just take the knight. He can't push this pawn because he's pinned. Which means that I can take this next. So if he were to go here, I could take this pawn first. Of course I could take this pawn with check. But I very well could take this pawn. So another, another thing to think about when you're in this rating range. When you have a strong position, tactics probably exist. So just consider when I take this knight, this also frees up my ability to take this pawn so that my queen you know sees the king through x-ray vision so this pawn right here cannot move does that make sense like if this pawn were to move it, he would be in check i try to keep it pretty simple i don't want it to be incredibly advanced but it's just something to consider so let me think here i i really think that that's the best move I think I'm going to go for it. I'm also considering if this queen were to be on a light square, do I have any... Um, for example, if this queen could just magically appear here and this pawn disappeared, there would be a fork and I could win a queen. Obviously, that is not what's happening, but it's just something to consider. I'm also getting low on the clock, so let me play a little bit more quickly. I did give him a, a quick uh, time gambit when I ran away. Oh, and he just resigns. Zero mistakes, zero blunders, zero misses. He wants to play again. Uh, let's just do a game review, see how we did. Just a quick little game review. Let me fix my screen. I should just have another scene to just make this easier, but I don't. Too lazy to make another scene, but I have enough energy to do this. So I played... Oh, you can't see it. Okay, I'll just tell you. I played at a 90.5% accuracy. I'm, I'm 1,400. I mean, it, of course, it wasn't a perfect game. Um, I had three inaccuracies. But it's kind of crazy, 1,400 level playing 90% accuracy. I mean, it starts to get tough out here. Because uh, I am miles away from a master level player. 
But also, I mean, 90% accuracy is not that hard when you're first... Let me see how many moves were, in my opinion, some type of theory for me. So what move is this? Four, here's five. This is all my main setup. This apparently is a mistake. I think it wanted me to drop back. There are some instances, it's usually only the Tartakar where you have to drop back. I'm taking that knight all day. I'm taking that knight all day. So I'll tell you where I left my my genuine setup. Wait, what's the best move here? Okay, that was another idea I had. But right about here is where I felt like I was on my own. So after 12 moves, I finally am on my own. So please, please, if you're lower rated and you, and you want to play the Karo, a couple things. You only play it against E4. I made the mistake all the way up to 1,000 playing, maybe even higher, playing it against D4, and I'd get blown away by, like, the London. I didn't understand why. Um, play it against E4 only, if you can, uh, unless you just want to practice. Like, if you're 400, I mean, you could play it against anything just to, like, understand the system of it and get used, like, some muscle memory of where the pieces go. But... The, the, take a screenshot of moves 0 through 12 and just sift through them. Just go back and forth and almost use it like a flashcard. Okay, the next piece should go, I think it's knight f6. And then go to the next slide. Okay, it was knight f6. Just do this over and over. I'm not saying that, you, that it is 100% a system and there will never be any type of deviation from it. But what I'm saying is get used to where the pieces go because they will probably end up on the same squares or at least it won't be a bad position. I mean, I already made a couple two inaccuracies, and uh, but it's still like uh, minus 0.7 for black. Black is black usually has to fight for the advantage. Usually, you could just play these solid moves, and they'll just make their own mistakes, and you'll end up with a decent position, even if you have a couple inaccuracies. Okay, let's keep going. Apparently, this was not a very good move. I was supposed to just castle whatever i was afraid of uh this down the road so it is what it is this is the best move that's a mistake by him i traded oh also fun fact computer says that he played like a 1400 which is his rating and i played like a 1950. i don't think i played like a 1950 reason being is because this was not a very long game in the first 12 moves i pretty much knew what i was going to do so i was only on my own for a couple moves. Um, I came up with an idea. This apparently is a great move, according to the computer, because um, it's a fork. Uh, this was an okay move, probably just taking the knights a little bit better. Now I took the knight. There was a better move than this. What was the best move? Ah, uh, okay. But I just thought that I just thought he was going to be able to get out. Ah, if he goes here, I have. Fork, but then he takes, and I can't, I don't know, whatever, computer's piece of shit, um, and then here we go, this was the, this was the last move, now, now, I want you to consider this psychologically, this is the last thing I'm gonna say to end the video, psychologically, this hurts, because even at, 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 at 1400, this is a hard thing to see, but, but, even though I want to keep this simple, when I was learning how to play chess, people would play moves that I knew I couldn't see at my rating level, and it would really frustrate me, and that's how they would get these wins. But when, you're, when you have such a strong position, there are going to be tactics that, are, that arise. And I almost didn't want to play this because I'm afraid a 400 might watch this and say, I will never see that. But what I want you to do is, I think in Lee Chess, you can like, on Lee Chess, I know it's chess combo, but I think on Lee Chess, you could choose what type of puzzles to do. Um, two really good ones to know are pins, um, and another good one to know is, uh, distractions. So, like, um, for example, you might check the king, and it forces him away to, to sack one of your pieces, and then you could win one of their pieces or a queen. So, distraction tactics and, uh, pin tactics are really good to, really good, um, tactics to know. This is utilizing one of them. Please spend some time... Uh, looking at this tactic, the uh, uh, pin tactics, because look, he he can't, he can't take, he just can't do it. See how it's a blinking red, the king. He can't take because he's pinned. Please, please know this tactic. Please know this tactic. 
because psychologically this just destroyed my opponent. He resigned immediately. Of course, it's plus seven, but it's not like we're grandmasters. He could still win here. I just won a pawn. I just won a pawn. I wasn't. I, I wasn't going to win the rook next. It was defended. He should still play on here. Um, he could even get in with his queen at some point. Um, I mean, there's different options that he could have still rocked with. I mean, he could have targeted this pawn. There, there, there's a lot of things he could have done down the road. And, and I've lost positions that are more winning than this. So just like, I don't know why these people resign. But psychologically, you have fucked someone up with something like this. So learn, learn this. Learn this tactic. My voice just cracked. Nice. Nice. I did both of my uh my opening accuracy was 98.6. My middle game accuracy was 87. Interesting. Well, please leave leave a comment. Any comment is helpful. I the channel's kind of been growing a, a little bit. Um so I appreciate all the nice comments and feedback. Even rude comments just for the algorithm. I don't give a shit. Um and and thanks again so much for watching and and hopefully this was helpful and up. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one. Take care.